Before we hop into the video, I just wanted to share some news with everyone out there who likes to collect horror movies or is trying to build their horror collection. Horror Pack is a monthly subscription service that sends out a box to all their subscribers containing four horror movies at random. They send out a box every month to everyone that subscribes to them, including four horror movies at random inside of the box. So if you want to select Blu-ray or DVD format, they do have those options as well. Those are the two options you have available to you. They have different subscription plans you can choose from. So whether you want to stay subscribed for a month, three months, six months, or a year, they have different pricing options for each format. They have the pricing options for the DVDs and the pricing options for the Blu-ray format as well. I will leave a link to that website down in the description of this video. And if you do decide to become a subscriber to them, you can get $3 off your first horror pack box by using the code it follows. Again, I'm going to leave a link in the description to the website. And if you decide to describe to horror pack and build your horror collection, you can get $3 off of your first box using the code it follows. With that in mind, let's get into the video. What is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here i just got done watching the nun the nun was released last night this is a this is the second or third spinoff we've gotten in this universe if you're familiar with this universe and the conjuring films you know that the original conjuring was released in 2013 and it was a critical as well as a box office success fans and critics alike gave this film praise um, I want to say the original Conjuring as well as the original Sidious, those are the two better films from the early 2010s. When we go back and look at this decade, I feel like people will recognize the original Insidious and the original Conjuring more so than anything else from this decade. Because those two, those two films literally stood out amongst the pack of films that we're going to be getting in this decade so far. Um, this movie here, The Nun... Now, let me talk about the character Valak. That's the character. Valak was first introduced in the second Conjuring film. Uh, in the second Conjuring film, Valak is the entity that's revealed to be the villain in charge because what we originally thought was that another entity was in charge, but really that entity was being controlled by Valak. So what I like about this film is how it's an origin story into Valak and how... Um, we get to find out how Valak was introduced into this world and how it potentially was taken out of this world. Now, my official thought on The Nun as a whole entire film, I think it was another decent entry into the franchise. I don't think it was anything great. I don't think it was. It wasn't bad. It definitely was not bad, but it also wasn't great. It was a decent, solid film for the universe. I did like it, but it was not anything over the top. It wasn't anything spectacular. Nothing really impressive here. Um, I will say that the sound design, the visual effects, the acting, uh, the cinematography, all of that stuff was fine. It was all solid. The acting was solid. Uh, the characters in the film, that's my that's one of my biggest gripes. I don't think they spend enough time developing these characters. So you so when you mix in characters that aren't fully developed with solid performances and cliche typical character decisions that they make throughout the film, in my opinion, what you're going to be getting is a, another decent film. From, for what you would come to expect from movies that come out in the 2010s from the horror genre, this movie is very. It has the it has the horror cliches, the tropes, the casual jump scare that occurs every other minute or two, every other five minutes. In this case, I feel like a jump scare occurred in this movie every other five minutes. And what I will appreciate is that this movie doesn't waste any time letting you know that this this is gonna just be a jump scare ride. The first the first scare that we get in the film is in fact a jump scare. Uh, the atmosphere in this movie is amazing. I like how they maintain that dark tone. A big, 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 big issue that I felt with this movie was how they did not... Like the first 40 minutes of this movie, there's literally nothing happening. Nothing's really happening between the characters. Uh, there's no real mention of Valak up until, like I said, 40 minutes into the film. We see Valak here and there, uh, but we don't really, we don't really get... A taste of what's to come the movie picks up and literally in the third final act of the film the final the final like 20 minutes or final 30 minutes of the film that's the movie's stronger point now 
A lot of critics have been saying that this movie is boring. I did not find anything boring in this movie. It was just a lot of nothing happening. I feel like the characters managed to keep me invested. I was invested with what was going on on screen. There was never a point where I wanted to look away. It was just nothing was happening. But the characters and the things they were getting themselves involved in kept me kept me glued to the screen. Even though it was just a ran it was like random sequences of jump scares that eventually get summed up at the end of the film because it ties into Valak and the origin of Valak. Another problem with the movie is how is Valak itself. Valak is not really shown too much in the movie. And while I say that is a issue, it's also kind of like a blessing in disguise, if you will, because what a lot of movies are doing now is they have their horror villains and they show way too much of them. So if you want to actually watch this series in chronological order, you would watch Valak and then you would watch, I believe, the first two Annabelle films. Or I could be mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, and then you would watch the original Conjuring films. Because what this movie does is at the end, it sets up a, it sets up perfectly to the first entry in the Conjuring universe. It sets up the original Conjuring film in a fantastic way. There's a character in this movie that ties into something that we get told in the narrative of the 2013 Conjuring film with Ed and Lorraine Warren. So like I was saying, Valak is not shown that much in this film, but when she is shown or when it's shown, they, they manage to keep it in darkness. It's secluded. It has the veil over. Um, it's not it's not just a straightaway giveaway of the face. The face is always we're always edged into the face. They don't just show it. It's always like a build up. Every time Valak's around, they treat it like it's a privilege to beginning to see this character on screen. And that's what I appreciate about it. Um, they keep that mystery and that intrigue around the character they keep it a factor but the character itself it's not for a movie to be about that entity or what we it seems that that's what the movie was going to be about the movie's really not about Valak because like I said Valak isn't even isn't even a factor in most of the movie she it's kind of just pull it's kind of just the um, it feels kind of like a like an accessory that's one thing I didn't like about the film Valak feels like an accessory even though the movie is intended to be about Valak, Valak feels like an accessory. Um, at the end of the day, the movie was not bad. I'm kind of in the middle with it. It was a solid film, another decent entry for the Conjuring universe. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, if I wanted to rate it from a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Because like I said, when you have great performances mixed with the with the great cinematography and the sound design, the visual effects, with the poorly developed characters and the typical horror cliches of the jump scares and all that other stuff that modern horror films do, that equals a decent film in my opinion. Uh, it is not bad. There are things that are left unanswered. That's why I'm giving it a six and not higher. It can't go. It can't, in my opinion, go any higher than that. When there's there's a bunch of stuff that's left unanswered. Uh, but I'm not going to go into spoilers. This is going to be a spoiler-free review. Um, I did enjoy the film. If you guys have seen The Nun, let me know what you guys thought down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe so if you so if you want to see more of my future content, you'll get notified. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell next to it. Also, down in the description of this video, I'll have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I also will have a link to my Patreon account. You can donate if you want to help the channel grow. Let me know what you guys want me to review down in the comments section and I will be back with more videos in the future.